you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, and we'll read from verses 19 to 25. Hebrews chapter 10, 19 to 25. And while you're getting there, I'll read in your hearing. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Isn't that good news? We can enter heaven's most holy place. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. Hallelujah. Anybody here to go right into the presence of God? Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm not playing around today. Hallelujah. I'm here to go into the presence of God. Hallelujah. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure waters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us boldly, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Can somebody just lift your hands? And just begin to enter boldly into the presence of God. Just lift your hands, close your eyes, and begin to bless God. Hallelujah. As we enter into his presence. Hallelujah. And as you lift your hands, just begin to see the Lord high and lifted up. Hallelujah. This scripture says that God, Jesus by his blood, he has sprinkled our conscience, which means... He's washed us and he's purified us in our innermost parts. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't lift our hands and sometimes we don't praise God because we're concerned about the ways that we fail, God. We are, we're concerned about the ways that we mess up. But as you lift your hand, can you just lift them like you have a right to do so? Play, praise God like you have a, a right to bless his name. Praise God like you're supposed to praise God hallelujah praise God like your consciences have been sprinkled with the blood of the lamb God we have a right God and we're going straight into your presence God father we're here for you oh God and we're going into your presence God we're not missing a beat we're not missing a step God but we're going to praise you with everything that we have we're not going to allow the mess ups and the mistakes of the week to hinder or to stop us from giving you a holy praise. We're going to allow the blood of Jesus to do what only the blood of Jesus can do. So God, we praise you. God, we bless you. God, we give you our best because we have a right to do so. Hallelujah. 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 Let's worship Jesus. He's wonderful. He's great. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Come on, clap those hands. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. For you are worthy. For you are worthy. For you are worthy. For you are worthy. For you Give you 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, the song stop, but your praise doesn't have to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Glory to your name, Jesus. We worship you, O God. Have your way in our midst today, O God. Prepare our hearts for you, O God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Father, have your way in this place. Hallelujah. We wait, we wait, we wait in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Come on, let's give God some glory in this house. Come on, he's worthy anyhow. Hallelujah. Just begin to praise him like you're supposed to. Hallelujah. You can lose yourself in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 As we get ready to transition into our announcements for today. Like was spoken earlier, the song can stop, but it doesn't mean that your worship has to stop. So let's put our hands together and bless God for Pastor Chantel as she comes with our kingdom announcements for today. Amen. Then immediately following the announcement, we'll have our mass choir, BC3. So we're going to ask those individuals who are part of the choir, you know who you are if you'll get yourselves prepared. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning. I am Chantel, and these are your kingdom announcements for today. November 5th, 2023. Amen. Hallelujah. First things first, we want to give honor to our lead servants. Amen. Hallelujah. First Timothy 5 and 17 says, give double honor to spiritual leaders who handle their duties well. This is especially true if they work hard at teaching the word of God and breakers. We've had some dynamic leaders for the past 21 years. They have been serving faithfully so we can give God glory for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Aramis and Rosanna Hines, even though they're not in the auditorium, um, please keep Lady Rosanna in your prayers as she is under the weather. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we do want to honor always Apostle Edwin Lindsay. He is on the air every weekday evening at 6 p.m. on Facebook, releasing the word of God. So we invite you out to join during that time. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to take this time to welcome any first time returning um, or end virtual visitors. Amen. The Breakers, make some noise for all of our visitors today. We welcome you all to the Empowerment Zone, amen, where we come here to change, hallelujah. We pray that you all are blessed and that you will come back and join us again. We want to make a brief reminder that we do host morning empowerment sessions every Sunday morning at 945, and we do have classes for youth and adults, amen. Praise God. We want to also remind you all of all of our prayer initiatives. Amen. Every Saturday we are here from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And we are praying together corporately. Amen. We host prayer also every Sunday morning from 8.30 to 9.15. Amen. And then every first Saturday we have our prayer lock in from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Amen. Glory to God. I want to make this announcement for our beloved Mom Trias Hines. Come on, y'all. Yes. Yes. She is celebrating her 70th birthday this coming Saturday. And they do invite all of her Breakers family to come out and be a part of that celebration. Amen. It is going to be here um, from 4 to 8. If you have not already RSVP, please see Sister Nairi. Nairi, if you can wave your hand. If you could please contact Sister Nairi and RSVP so that we can ensure that all is well when Saturday comes. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Anniversary. It's anniversary time. It is anniversary time. We started off yesterday with Occupy the Porch, and it was great. It was an exciting time. We got to touch so many lives, feed so many stomachs, put coats on people's backs. Amen. It was so great. Um, and we know that this ministry um, is outreach-oriented. Amen. We've been outreach since the beginning, and we're going to continue to do that. So thank you all who came out and supported on yesterday. Amen. 
Hallelujah. We do have our ministry foot washing service on the 17th. Come on, let's make it. Hallelujah. Opportunity to serve one another. Hallelujah. Foot washing of the feet. It is from 6 to 8 p.m. right here. Amen. And then, of course, we have our anniversary celebration banquet. I see those tickets coming in. If you would like to purchase your ticket, you can see myself. You can see Sister Simone or Sister Sapphira or anyone from our fundraising team. Please take time to get these tickets. Um, they are $35 for adults, and they are $21 for children. And if your child is three or under, they are free. Amen? So please take some time to come out and celebrate with us on November the 18th. Hallelujah. Um, on November the 19th, it is our anniversary celebration service. Amen? Y'all don't sound happy enough. Can we give God some glory? Hallelujah. We are celebrating 21 years of ministry. This is our year of release. Amen. The service will start at 2 p.m. So there will be no morning services. Amen. Everybody say 2 p.m. There will be no morning services. Say that out loud. So you can. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There will be no morning service, but we're going to be convening here at 2 p.m. to celebrate together. Amen. It is also Family and Friends Day, so we are encouraging you to invite all your family and friends out to join us during that time. Amen. We will also be taking time to honor our lead servants. Amen. It, we will have, yes, yes, it's worthy, it's due. We are going to take some time in that service to honor them for their 21 years of pastoral ministry. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, and then we have a skating party. It is on the 26th, so we are welcoming everyone out to join us for our skating party. We got tickets. If you need tickets, you can see myself. You can see Sister Sapphira. Um, they are $21. Amen. So if you would like to join us during that time, please, please, please come out and join us. And please invite others to come out. Amen. Amen. Just a friendly reminder of our pledge campaign for the anniversary. Amen. We are asking each individual to just pledge $10 a year, which equates to $210. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We do have our hoodies and our t-shirts still on sale right now. They The deadline is November the 11th. And so if you plan to get a t-shirt or a hoodie, Please get that in by November the 11th. All of the information is out in your emails and your text messages. We also have packages. Amen. We have um, some packages that, that are all inclusive that will ensure that you are able to attend, attend every event we have and have our anniversary gear. Amen. So please if, check your emails, check your text messages, or contact me, and I will make sure you get everything you need. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. Then we, we got an extra hour to. Hallelujah. Wake up. Hosea. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Happy birthday this week. We got Brother JD celebrating on the 6th. Happy birthday, Brother JD. We have Brother Billy. Where are you, Brother Billy? He's celebrating on the 8th. Happy birthday to you. And then, of course, we have Mom Hines celebrating on the 11th. Happy birthday to you as well. Hallelujah. We have two special anniversaries this month. We have Brother Carlos and Sister Danielle celebrate 13 years on the 9th. Happy anniversary to the McDonald's. And then we also have Brother Mark Travis and Sister Alina. They're celebrating three years on the 14th. Happy anniversary to you too. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to uh, take some time to offer our deepest condolences to those, our members who have lost loved ones. This week, we have the loss of Mr. Leonard Johnson, who is the father of Apostle Sandra Jenkins and Mr. Tony. So please keep them lifted in your prayer during this time. 
And then we also have the loss of Miss Devon Almond King, which was the niece of Deacon and Evangelist Gaston. Amen. So please keep them in your prayers during this time. Reach out, offer your support, your prayers, and even your time. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have an announcement, please submit it by Friday to myself or email it to admin at breakercc.tv. Thank you. These are all of your announcements. Please give me a seat to COVID. Amen. We're going to get ready to have our mass choir come. So if you're a member of the choir, amen, we'll have you line up in your positions. Amen. And they're getting ready to bless us. Can we put our hands for the mass choir? They, they get themselves in position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the members of the choir, if you get yourselves in position, immediately after the choir, you'll have the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll get these things out the way and make room for our choir. Can we put our hands together and bless God for them?
is great. God is great. God is great. God is great. Somebody say, God is great. God is great. God is great. Is there anybody lift your voice, lift your hands and say, God is great. How many know that that's a song all by itself? Say, my God is great. If we could just have a couple more people around the world to declare the truth that God is great. <laughs> Come on, someone. Say, God is great. God is great. Say, God is great. I don't know about you, but he's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a sustainer. God is great. We don't need a whole lot of words. Somebody declare. Just say, God is great. And if you begin to say it over and over again, joy will begin to spring up. Say, God. Look at your neighbor, and just in case they didn't know, say, God is great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God is great. God is great. Come on, glory to God. Look at somebody else. Say, God is great. can say, I don't know all the words of the song, but say, God is great. God is great. God is great. Wars all over the world, but God is great. Sickness and disease, but our God is great. People laying in the bed, in the hospital, but God. How many know that God's a healer? He's a restorer. He's a keeper. Hallelujah. Say, God is great. Hallelujah. If only we can open up the news, channel 247, Fox 2, MSNBC, CNN, and the front page would be consistent. Instead of misleading us and guiding us into places of fear and anxiety, if only we can open it up and see the truth that great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He rules and he super rules. He is Alpha and he is the Omega. He's already predetermined no matter how bad things look that all things are going to work together for the good for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Is there anybody in here that's called according to his purpose? Then I wish you would just dance a little bit and say God is great, God is great. I wish somebody would begin to dance because you know it's already all right. It's already all right. Hey, say God, God is great. Yes, say God is great. Come on, let's lift them up where he belongs in the heart. Say God, say God. Say glory. Hallelujah. I wish you would just begin to bless him right there. You don't need your neighbor right now. Forget about the person next to you. And just begin to make sure it's clear to the devil what your stance is when it comes to our great God. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of all of them because our God is a great deliverer. Our God is a healer. Our God is a keeper. Look at somebody and say, God will keep you because he's a keeper. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. I said, oh, to be kept by Jesus. I said, oh, to be kept by the Lord. chat there was a lady that came in and she was addicted to drugs now we would never know this because we don't do this for the fame or the glamour but she said the man of God was up preaching I don't even know who the man of God was that day but all I know is she said that she heard a word come out of the man of God's mouth and instantly the desire for drugs broke off of her. He's a great God. Now we wouldn't know it, people of God, because we're here just minding our business and he's a great God. We know he's gonna touch somebody and we don't even know who that somebody is, but we know he's a great God. Maybe last Sunday wasn't the Sunday for you, but today is your Sunday of deliverance. He's a great God. We'll declare it to the ends of the earth. We'll declare it to the ends of the earth. He's great. So she shows up to occupy the porch. But this time, so And the testimony I heard is that she just wanted to come in the space where it happened. And when she stepped foot into the sanctuary, she just began to give God amazing praise because God did what people probably thought he wouldn't do for her. God met her in a place that a lot of people said is all over for her. I'm here to tell you, people of God, you may not believe it, but God is able, whether you believe it or not, he reached beyond our faults and he sees our needs and all he needs is for us to believe that he's great. Somebody say, he's a great God. Somebody say, he's great. Listen, yokes are destroyed. Burdens are removed. Somebody declare he's great. If he did it for me, I know that I know that I know he'll do it for you. I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. Hey, because he's a great. somebody just give God a wave offering. When I was a kid, I didn't even understand the wave. I didn't even understand it. They would say, give God a wave. And I would be like, what is the wave for? But listen, it didn't even matter because as I began to wave my hands before the Lord, I began to connect with this God in the spirit. 
I begin to sense his presence begin to come all around me and consume me. Is there anybody that feels that way? God, come and consume me right now. I want you to consume me right now. I lift my hands in humble adoration and I acknowledge you no matter where I am. I know who you are and I know what you're able to do. So I praise you in advance because you are holy, God. And this is a holy place. I want you to take a moment. And we're going to prepare to give. But our giving is a little less traditional. If you haven't already prepared your offering, I just want you to prepare your offering. There's a box right in front of me by those great doors. I want you to go and bless God in your giving. And I want you to greet your neighbor and just tell him one thing. Tell him I love you. And then tell him he's a great God because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they're trying to navigate, but you can speak life into their spirit. Go ahead, get up out of your seat. We are family up in here. And go and greet your neighbor. Take a moment to give unto the Lord. And tell somebody he's a great God. somebody don't live in the island to yourself tell somebody of God's goodness tell them he's good he's good you might have to shake somebody's hand he's good my God is good yes yes for those watching online we greet you in the name of the Lord we declare unto you that greater is he that's in you that's than he that is in the world. Our God is a great God. If you would like to render your offering, it's on the screen right now if you're giving electronically. But as you go and greet your brother and sister, let's give cheerfully unto the Lord, to the work of the Lord, and celebrate all that God is and celebrate all that God is doing. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. He's good to Israel. He's good to his people. His mercy endures forever. He allows the sun to rise upon the just as well as the unjust. That's the goodness of our God. Tell somebody he's a great God. Tell him he's great in you. Hallelujah. He's great in you. I see his greatness all over you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I feel God in this place. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, I hear the praises. Go ahead, release those praises to the Lord. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's a great God. He's turning over in my spirit. He's a great God. Oh, Mr. He's a great God. Yes, he's a great guy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. As you find yourselves back to your seat, nobody like Jesus. Nobody like the Lord. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. <laughs> nobody great, 
I feel my voice. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched all over. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Somebody say nobody. Nobody. I hear you say nobody. Say nobody greater than you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hey, nobody. I can't find nobody. Tell the Lord, say nobody greater than you. Last time, say nobody. Nobody. Nobody greater. Let's end it. Nobody greater than you. Listen, y'all, we celebrate it. Oh, yes. This is a time of celebration for the people of God. Oh, we're in our year release. And God is ready to do some mighty things in our midst. I threw down my garment that was full of sorrow and mourning. And I traded it for the joy of the Lord. Hey, hey. For the joy of the Lord. It's my strength. trying to pull the Baptist out of me. Yeah. Grab your Bibles, people of God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. church said amen. Grab your Bibles with me if you would. Oh yes. No need to act like he's not here. We brought him in. He's in me and he's keeping me alive. The Lord is truly in his holy temple. Hallelujah. Go to Acts chapter number two. My, 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 my. That's what the, the old folks used to say when I was a kid. My, 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 my. See, sometimes when you couldn't just say a word, you was just moan. Mm. All right. <laughs> hey, oh. See, that's what got me through when I was a young man. God is good, yes, He is. The Lord is good. See, they didn't do all them big words, and you got to try to pronounce them and be like Google. They just kept it simple. Somebody say, keep it simple. He's a great God. Yeah. See, what they would do is they wouldn't give us a lot of words. They'd give us a few out of their spirit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. See, it would hit somewhere in your spirit. Your mind trying to figure out what is they saying. But that spirit man is, yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness, somebody? Yeah. I 
Hallelujah. Took me a little while to understand I have to grow up a little bit. They could do some trials and tribulations. Do I have a witness, somebody? I used to say, what is trials and tribulations? Why do they keep saying that? Live a little bit. You'll learn what they are, won't you? But how many know he's a keeper? And he'll keep you if you want to be kept. Acts 2.36. It says, it says in so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, 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 what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sin and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, this promise is to your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. And then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. The Bible said those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. My God. Verse 42, and all the believers devoted themselves. Somebody say, I'm a believer. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to fellowship. They devoted themselves to sharing in meals that included the Lord's Supper. They devoted themselves to prayer. And a deep sense of awe came over them all. Somebody say awe. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place, and they shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions, and they shared their money with those in need. They worshiped together. Alleluia. Alleluia. They worshiped together. The church is in us. I don't have to be at church in the building. The church is in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals. And they did so with great joy and with great generosity. All the while, <laughs> all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Mighty God, we exalt you in your house of worship. It's so evident that you're here with us today. More importantly, you're in us. The great I am, the creator of all things, El Shaddai, Adonai, Elohim. You're in us. And we thank you. As the text said, we are in all of you today we thank you for an opportunity to share out of your holy word and we anticipate how you're going to nourish us with joy and with great excitement as we grow in the knowledge of you as we continue to accept the call to be removed from this untoward generation to live out the call that you call us to be as light in this earth salt to the world 
interest of your word brings light. Light up our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say amen. amen. Praise God. You could be seated in the presence of the Lord, but you don't have to be. You could stand if you want to. I want to talk to you uh, from the topic, the unity of the faith. Somebody say the unity of the faith. You know, we read a lot of scripture and from the Old Testament, the Hebrew text, um, to the New. We hear about the great prophets, the great emancipators, those that suffered, martyrs. We hear about a lot of things. And we're moved by the many great men and women of God who received the faith. And they begin to live out a life, a valiant life of devotion to God. And they exemplify to us the life that God entitled or desired for us to live. But oftentimes, that's where it ends. We admire everyone else's walk with God. And we never believe that we can have one ourselves. Ah. So we, we, we walk through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We step into the book of Acts because that's when... The church was birthed. And this whole plan of God from the time of the fall in the garden to the time John the Baptist proclaimed the coming of the Messiah to the time Jesus stepped foot on the ground. It was all for the purpose of reviving God's people and bringing to the forefront God's ecclesia, the government, the spiritual government that is meant to literally, you know, just govern everything in the world. It's spiritual, but it's very potent when you understand that it's not the natural systems and the principalities, uh, those high places or high people in the world that governs things, but God governs all things. But God chose to bring his son so that his son can bring back to life the fact that God's chosen ones, those that accept Jesus, are the ones that are really the leaders in society. But if we don't understand that, we'll constantly try to work with a broken system, a broken world. But Peter was saying, save yourself from this wicked, this cursed, this untoward generation. Remove yourself from it and come into the knowledge of the truth. So Jesus is crucified. We understand he stayed in the grave. He defeated death. He took the keys of hell in the grave. He said, all power in heaven and earth is what? Given to me. All power in heaven and earth. He took the keys. Keys denote authority. And I'm going somewhere with this. When Jesus snatched the keys, every diabolical system every diabolical government, every diabolical mindset, every curse, every lie, every, every happening, every satanic thing. When Jesus took the keys, literally those things lost their power. Anybody believe that today? But he wasn't done because his goal wasn't to Rise as the champion of all things and say, look what I did, because he came from that place. Jesus didn't come down because he didn't know who he was and he wanted to build a reputation for himself. He was God incarnate. That means that the Bible says in Philippians, he humbled himself no matter what he was, who he was in the heavenly realm. He humbled himself because there was a greater purpose. And I want to submit to you all that we are the greater purpose. Jesus came for us. The Bible says that for the joy that was set before him. Even on the cross, he could endure it while he was being spat upon, while he was being nailed to a sinner's and a criminal's cross. He could endure it because he saw something joyful at the end of it, and we were that joy. Now, you can make it personal. 
you could say, I was that joy. <laughs> he saw me. <laughs> Woo! Talk about liberty, y'all like, amen. I wish somebody catch. He saw me on the cross. He looked at me and said, oh, when I get done with them, uh, they're going to turn this world upside down. I can stand this. This is just a seed in the dirt. But when it comes back up, it's going to produce much fruit. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory. So Jesus wasn't thinking about who am I and what is the purpose and why am I going through everything I'm going through and I just don't think it's fair and people hate me and they always talking about me. They act like they for me but behind they bound back they talking about me. Jesus wasn't mixed up in that. Some of us haven't even made it to our dying point. We messed up because somebody said they don't like us. We already ready to lead a faith. On the cross, he saw something beautiful. He saw restoration. He saw the purposes of God coming back to full flourishing. He saw the assignment of the enemy destroyed. He saw the power of sin destroyed. And as a result, he saw God's people rise up into the fullness of the stature of who they really are in God. And because of this, he had joy in suffering. He was okay finishing his time in the earth, even though it was hard. We were his joy. Somebody say, we were his joy. So he had deposited for three years everything the father was releasing to him in obedience. He passed it to his apostles. They were disciples. Disciples were simply disciplined followers. Somebody say disciplined follower. Somebody say, I am a disciplined follower of Jesus Christ. Can we clap our hands right there for that truth? He was pouring into them the things that they would need so that when he went away to go back where he was before he came, he would have left what was needed for us to take dominion, to subdue this earth. And when no one tells you that, they leave you constantly fighting from the dust when you were never meant to live in the dust. So why are you fighting there? See, some of us, and I'm going to leave this, and I'm, coming, I'm, I'm leaving, go to this, and I'm going to come back to where I was, but some of us are convinced we are meant to fight in the dust. You know, accusations, we meant to live where accusations are. Some of us think that we're meant to live in poverty, material poverty, relational poverty, just attitudes, just jacked up. We think negativity is just how we were made. But I'm here to tell you, people of God, when Jesus was on that cross, he saw something. He saw a people that would no longer be subjected to the lies of the enemy. They can now receive their true identity. And when they get their true identity, they can count now manifest the fullness of who they really are through Christ Jesus. And at that point, you rise up out of the dust. The dust is no longer your dwelling place. So if there's arguing happening on the dust, you don't even go and look at it no more because you're not called to live in the dust. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Somebody clap your hands for being seated. Somebody say, I'm seated in heavenly places. Say, with Christ Jesus. He was releasing his teaching because identity was attached to that. And if we don't know who we are from our maker, then we'll accept anything that anybody else says about us. When they said you can't learn, you're going to always have problems in school. They lied. Do I have a witness, somebody? See, that's the dust right there. That it is the dust. 
See, the Bible says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I have the mind of Christ. Do you know what it means to have the mind of Christ? That means there is literally nothing you cannot understand because the one who understands it all is alive on the inside of you. So if you tried to tell my story before I knew who I was, yeah, it would have been the truth. But when Jesus came into my life, I became a genius. Uh, you know, the way I learn is, is very unique because, you know, I have problems, this, that. Uh, uh, get out the dust. Get out the dust. You think the problem is you just can't get it. You're never going to get it in a place that you don't belong. Look at your neighbor and lovingly tell them to get out the dust. Young folks, tell one of the young people too. Tell them we got to get out the dust. Instagram is not supposed to give you your identity. Your likes or unlikes, dislikes are not supposed to give you your identity. I'm here to tell you it's the glory of God. It is not an app with a filter that takes away what you call blemishes. It's who God made you to be, the way he made you. You're beautiful. You're so conceited. No, I'm beautiful. Do you know who my daddy is? Do you know who made me? Big nose telling you. God really knew what he was doing. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Look at your neighbor and say, for the slow ones, Jesus is the rock. Amen. Get Dwayne out your head. Amen. Is he gone yet? Jesus had a plan. He's going to give him everything that the Father gave him. He told his disciples, you are my friends. You know how I know you're my friends? You're my friends because everything that my daddy told me, I tell you. Right? So when you get around people that say they're your friends, but they're so locked up. They're so blocked up. So what was that? I'm sorry. I just... Mm, mm. Oh, it's that deep? Yes, I'm sorry, you wouldn't understand. Oh, it's that, oh, it's that complicated. They're not your friends. They think that what they have is what gives them an advantage over you. And what they want to do is make sure there's enough distance so you don't even know where they really are. But I'm here to tell you, when you get friends in God, everything the Lord released to them, they want you to know. Because the goal is for them to think that you're a superstar. You want to see everybody win. The devil don't care. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God says, I come that you may have what? Life in that more abundantly. Your friends want you to live, not kiss your behind. They want to see you win. They want to see you go into that high place. Oh, hallelujah. They want to see you live in that place that God called you to live. Oh, glory to God. They want to see you mount up with wings as eagles. Be able to run and not get weary. Walk and not faint. Your real friends want to see you win. Ask your neighbor, do you want to see me win? But everything a secret. You don't want to see me win. Everything's a secret. Everything's private. You don't want to see me win. Look, everything's been copywritten. Come on, somebody. We copywriting in the kingdom. That don't make no sense. I'm sorry. I can't tell you till it come out in my book. I don't want you to steal it from me. The revelation God gave me. I'm sorry. Freely you have. Freely you're supposed to what? All that other stuff is the world. And you've bought into it. Amen. So Jesus was releasing things. I don't know where I went, but Jesus was releasing his heart. Christ was releasing the Father's heart into his disciples. He knew he had to go, and he was entrusting these 12, well, really the 11, amen. One of them was the devil. His name was what? 
Look at your neighbor and say, are you Judas? Say, please don't be Judas. Go ahead, tell him, please don't be Judas. Judas was a sellout. Say, are you a sellout? <laughs> Just because Jesus kissed his cheek didn't mean he didn't know what he was doing. I praise God. All right, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> You'll be replaced real soon. But the goal was for the right message to get out about the kingdom. Somebody say the right message. The goal was for the right message to get out about the kingdom. Because there was a whole lot of people that wanted to give a perverted version of the good news. Jesus didn't release the riches to everyone. Even when he talked in parables, he said, I talk in parables because they're not ready yet. He said, but it's given unto you to know the secrets, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Because I'm entrusted that when I go away, everything you thought wasn't working is going to get activated. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, activate. I wish you would say that with some conviction. Say, Holy Spirit, activate. See, this is the thing, and I want to go ahead and release this because some of us, I know you're taking notes, but if you're really about this, you can just go ahead and suck it in like a sponge and go back and watch the video if you would just release yourself from your way of learning because God wants to infuse something on the inside of you that requires your full attention. You're trying to get it down thinking you're going to lose it, but God said in his word, when he puts something on the inside of you, he'll bring it back to your remembrance. We're so busy trying to legalize something that's spiritual. Just enjoy the message. You take notes when you're watching a movie? Oh, so and so just, no. You watch the movie. Well, you're here to receive the word. Well, I like to get past what you like to do. What is the spirit of the Lord saying right now? He may want you to get on your feet and jump for joy because something hit your spirit. I can't stand because I'm still trying to take my notes. Now listen, people of God, don't think I'm trying to get on on the note takers. I'm just saying, if you don't get it, don't let it dismiss you from the message. Nowadays, we got a technology. You can go back and listen to it again. The Lord is speaking to our spirit. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, activate what if he want to activate you right now with your pen in your hand? Somebody say, glory! glory. Things of the spirit are only spiritually discerned. You're not going to get it from rehearsing it over and over again. That is a mental way of trying to understand spiritual things. So rest in the fact that Holy Spirit is here to speak to your spirit. Somebody, Lord, somebody say, Lord, speak to my spirit. Let me tell you why. Because anybody's mind be all over the place sometimes. So you're trying to put holy things in this mind that's all over the place. And guess what happened? It get intermingled with everything. But if you say, Lord, put that word in my spirit. How many know the mind can't go and clutter the spirit? The spirit has rulership over your mind. And God would go and pull up out of you what he put in you because it's him in you. Christ in you, the hope. The hope of glory. Almost done. Almost done even though I just feel like I got started. Now listen, so Peter preaches to them and this isn't Jesus preaching, this is Peter. Now some of us want Jesus to do everything. Jesus left. Somebody say he rose, then he ascended. That means he left. Tell somebody, I don't know if you know, but Jesus left. He's not here. It's biblical, don't worry, don't get nervous. He left. He left. And guess what he did? He said, I have to go because if I don't go, you won't get activated. See, and the reason why some of us aren't activated because we keep trying to come, come Lord Jesus. No, I'm not coming back right now. I came to release my spirit so he can operate through you. 
And that's good news. I endured the cross because I saw what I was getting ready to see take place in your life. So stop bringing Jesus back down. He's coming back one day, but it's not right now. He said, if I don't go. Let me break this down for you and I'm going to move on. He said, if I don't go, then the Holy Ghost. The advocate can't come. So guess what happened when you keep trying to bring him back? You try to bring Jesus back and you dismiss the advocate. Oh, I heard that woo. Woo! Because we've been preaching it all wrong. We keep praying Jesus to come and do something. He said, I'm leaving here. I took three years to pour my whole self into my disciples because I know they were going to go to the ends of the earth and they were going to spread this good gospel and they weren't going to do it by their own might or their own power, but by my spirit. Oh, what a concept. Hmm. That's interesting. That's something I'm going to have to go home and study. Do what you have to do. But he gone. Bible says he ascended. He's not here. I'm pausing on purpose. Because when you start praying, because that's how you heard people pray all the time, you're going to start trying to call him back. You don't even mean it. Thank God God know what we mean. I'm glad he don't get irritated because I would get irritated with you. What do you mean, Jesus, come? No, no, no. That's not even theological. It's a big error. Every time you tell Jesus to come, you dismiss your advocate. Holy Spirit came to lead and to guide us into what? So what you're really doing is saying, God, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to manifest what you've called me to manifest as a son and daughter of God. Bible says, my sheep, they know my voice. And a stranger, they won't follow. The Bible says, our spirits bear witness with his spirit that we are children of. And we cry out what? Abba, Father. When you don't release yourself to Holy Spirit and you're wondering why you can't say Abba. You're wondering why your prayer life is jacked up. You're wondering why you're tired of repeating the same things over and over again to God. Because you're praying out of your mind. It now become a human effort instead of the working of Holy Spirit. Go ahead, clap it out. Don't condemn yourself. Just clap it on now. Hallelujah. I said clap it on now, people of God. Don't give the devil no room to condemn you. Uh, I don't understand. Uh-uh. Clap it on now. Lord is dealing with you. Hallelujah. Because you can correct that. Because that's a key. That's going to get you out the dust. And it's going to step you where you're supposed to be. In heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Almost there. So Peter's preaching, and you can read his message. The Bible says he preached until it pierced their hearts. Man, if only we would preach to the piercing of the heart. We stop our message at the point where the point hit the heart. You know, because it's a little pointy. As soon as we feel that little ding, <gasps> oh, you can stab me. The preacher don't love me. <laughs> He's not supposed to hurt me. He's supposed to tell me everything's going to be all right. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. Oh, my God, I'm bleeding. You can laugh. It's okay. We get dramatic sometimes. Y'all never get dramatic in your walk with God. Elizabeth, this is a big one. Come on. They got me. Pierced their hearts to the point that they said, what should we do? You see, some of us come to God trying to tell God what he should do. When your heart gets pierced, 
you start asking, what do you want me to do? See, I be asking people to just be pushing the word. When they clap it, they're helping to push the word so that other spirit don't come in and try to shut the message down. So they clap it on now. They clap it on. Anybody willing to clap it on now for the Lord? He said, each of you must change the way you think. Repentance means a change of thinking. What do we have to do with the information we receive that pierced our heart? He says, it's time to change the way you think. And with your change of thinking, turn to where God is. That's it. Turn to God. Be baptized. That baptism is, is where you really become one with Christ. Right? As the Lord was put in the lower parts of the earth for three days and three nights, when we go down in baptism, what we're doing is we're dying to our old man. Symbolically, we're dying. We're putting off that old man. So if you haven't been baptized and you don't think it's necessary, it's not really necessary. But let me tell you, Jesus did it. He was baptized by John the Baptist. And John the Baptist didn't even feel worthy to baptize him. But Jesus said, oh, no, you're going to baptize me. So if Jesus is good enough to get baptized, let me tell you something. I'm getting baptized too. So if you haven't been baptized, I want to, have you been down in the water? I just want to ask you if you haven't been down in the water that you say, I want to be baptized because it's symbolic. It is a public demonstration of me saying, I repent. I change the way I think and I turn to where God is and I am ready to live the Christ life. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody say, I'm ready. Went down in baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Then 39, this promise is to you and to your children and even to the, to the Gentiles, the non-Jews, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Peter continued to preach for a long time. For a long time, he continued to preach, strongly urging. And this is the thing, too, people of God. Why all our messages got to be so soft? Can you imagine? I'm a Michigan fan, and they just blew Purdue out yesterday, didn't they? Just toasted them. And when they get them touchdowns, can you imagine being just overwhelmingly exhilarated, just full of life? And for the sake of not offending people, you just go, yay. Ooh. Oh, y'all just stiff in here today. What is going on? Y'all know that's funny. Yay. Ooh. When on the inside, you like. You're doing the touchdown dance and everything, aren't you? Ah! Spin the ball on the turf, but not to offend anyone. Thank you, Jesus. And this is what we do in the kingdom of God. And we teach people that this is the way to make sure that everybody feels welcome and they don't ever feel like you're yelling at them because some people grew up with a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming and abuse. And so when you lift your voice, you're traumatizing them. Uh. Hmm. Nah, that's a lie. I tested it. Nah, that's not true. You know how I know? Because wherever God is, that's where God's people want to be. And when the Lord is speaking, it doesn't matter if you whisper, but you can also hear his voice with strength. And people will say, the Lord is truly in this place. It won't sound like the screaming of that bad parent or the one that had attitudes and anger problems. It will sound like the sound of a trumpet, something that resonates and calls the heart to vibrate to a place that makes you want to bow and say, the Lord our God, he is Lord. 
And if somebody can't get excited about the true and living God, then I'm scared because you're going to dance all over the place for a Lions football game, but you can't get excited about our Redeemer. So, yes, I'm going to yell. And I'm not mad at you. Yes, I'm going to use a strong voice. It doesn't mean you have, I have a problem with you. I'm passionate about the most important news that anybody in this world could ever know about. It was great enough news for Jesus on the cross to have joy. Did you hear that? On the cross, he saw something before him. The joy that was set before him caused him to endure. He was able to stay in that hard place. And see, some of us find ourselves in the hard place, and that's when we retreat back to how we were. Has anybody ever said, I'm ready to do this thing for God? I repent, and I turn to God, psh, get baptized, and then it seems like, ah. The enemy start hitting everything. Pow, 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 pow. Yeah, whoa, whoa. It wasn't like this yesterday. What's going on? Ah, ah, ah. Anybody been there? Oh, Lord Jesus. I might have did it too soon. I might have did it too soon. Okay, okay, I'll calm down. I'm not going to pray every day no more. Because they can get turned up, don't it? And so what we do, we go sign our lease back with the devil. Just so he can keep us comfortable till we get to hell. It's possible to have joy in a hard place. Can anybody clap your hands for joy in a hard place? See, if you know your Bible, do you know Paul wrote a whole lot of letters from a hard place? He was excited about what was happening in the life of the believer, even though his message was putting him in prison. He didn't care. He was still sending love letters to the church, talking about how great God is, how much he missed them, can't wait to see them. But in the meantime, he think of them in great way and expect great things to come out of their life. He was talking about them in a great way. He wasn't saying, oh me, oh my, it's just this is the cross that I have to bear, and y'all just don't care about me no more. Look at me. I sacrificed my life, and I'm in prison. I'm a smart man. He had joy. The disciples, listen, when Jesus ascended and the disciples were persecuted, read your Bible, they had joy that they were able to suffer for the name of Jesus. Is there anybody in here that says that I'm willing to suffer for the name of Jesus? The Bible says if you suffer with him, you'll also reign with him. And if you haven't learned how to endure hardness like a good soldier, then the enemy will always be able to reel you right back to the dusty place. Somebody say the unity of the faith. Man, they repented, was baptized, and the Bible says, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to land the plane and pick up some more passengers right here. You'll receive the gift of Holy Spirit. And if you read back, you will find out that that's exactly what happened. The believers came together it's just like we're together now. They were on one mind. They were on one accord. They was tired of living a life subpar, less than how God called them to live. They had already made up the decision that they're going to sit here and they're going to fellowship. They're going to break bread. They're going to pray together. And they're going to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come and, and, and to, to lift them and to take them into the place they're called to be. It happened. And what we're reading is the tail end of one of the most miraculous things you'll read in Scripture. And the Holy Spirit came and sat on the believers like a dove. And they began to pray in a heavenly language. And they began to speak in tongues and others could understand what they were saying, even if they weren't from the same land. The miraculous was unfolded. The door to the impossible being made possible was revealed. And God's people were stepping back into their right place in God. I started by giving the testimony of a lady that came in and she heard a word from God. And she said that instantly that thing that was working in her life to throw her into dark places, it instantly dried up. She was delivered instantly. See, some of us think it's about 
getting numbers in the building. Thank God for the numbers. I love to see you. It definitely is encouragement. I hope you keep coming. But the truth is, the message, we don't know where the good ground is. We don't know. We just know when the Lord tells us to speak, we have to speak what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. We cannot reduce the power of the gospel to our circumstance. It is erroneous and it is fraudulent for us to allow where we are in our personal lives to dictate how we represent God to others. And that's why you have to be okay in a place of suffering. That's why you got to learn how to, boom, put your hand on the cross, boom, like Jesus did, and still have your eyes fixed on the prize. Because when this is over, y'all don't even understand, I'm going to bounce back like the new weather in Michigan comes. Come on, like winter to springtime, you're going to see me bounce back. You're going to say, Yep, he went down in the dirt. Man, I don't know what happened after that. I went to look for the place he was buried, and he's not even there no more. He don't have a place in the dirt no more. He's seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And guess what? I can't even touch him no more. The man I used to know, I don't even know no more. The attitude he used to have, he don't even have no more. The habits he used to hold, he don't hold those habits no more. I can't even relate to this person no more. Something has changed in their lives. Jesus knew that when he went down, he would rise. And many of us, out of fear, we won't die because we don't think we'll rise. Baptism required that we go down in order to go up. But we don't teach it that way. We say, Jesus loves you. Go up. No, you don't go up first, minstrel. It's okay if I talk to you for just a second. Let me just talk to minstrel. Y'all just listen maybe if you want to eavesdrop. You don't go up first. You got to go down first, man. The greatest among them is a minister. They're not the ones that can say, look at me now. It's the ones that don't need nobody to look at them. Jesus, from where he was, started not robbery to be a servant. He served to his death. That was his greatness. And then he rose like a boss and said, y'all thought death could hold me? He got real quiet. Look at somebody and say, death can't hold you. They received the Holy Spirit. He said, this promise is to you. This is to your children. This is to the non-Jew, all those that will believe in the Lord. He preached, save yourself from this crooked generation. 3,000 souls gave themselves to the Lord that day. And all the believers, listen, this is where I close. They, they devoted themselves to whose teaching? Which apostles? The 12. They weren't devoting themselves to somebody, that some jack led that decided that they wanted to become somebody. No, you don't just get to put a bishop in front of your name and that make you a bishop. You don't just say, I woke up today feeling like an apostle, so now you got to listen to me. <laughs> I'm like, what is that noise? <laughs> oh, minstrel hit a key. It was the 12. Don't just listen to anybody. Find out who they follow. Were you with Jesus? Why am I listening to you? When everywhere Jesus is, I never see you. I don't care what your title is. If I can't see you with Jesus and I'm trying to be with Jesus, I'm not listening to what you have to say. They devoted themselves not to Jesus. See, we don't like authority. We want freedom to do whatever we want to do. Right? That's why some of us, and I use the note-taking because the Lord told me to tell y'all this. I think I might have mentioned it in the Thursday class. Be careful. Take notes, but when the Holy Spirit moves, put that pad down. The good news, back in the day, they didn't have no video. You couldn't just go back to YouTube or Facebook and watch the message. You can do that now. So now you can prefer to be in the moment with God. 
Because it's a rhema word that God is releasing. Get what he's putting in your spirit. Because you'll walk out that door changed. And it won't have nothing to do with what you conjured up in your mind. Like the woman said, I came in and the word broke. Everything that was working in my life, it was a word that hit my spirit. And it changed me and put me on a different path. How many people want that? Then stop trying to control your your progress in God. I want to be a student of the word, and so here I go. Get delivered. You're putting yourself in bondage. How do you know? Because when you get home, you get confused. If that was the Lord, then why are you confused? It's for your spirit. The things of the spirit, according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 or 2, they're only spiritually discerned. You ain't going to get it with your mind. The carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. And we must acknowledge that. When your carnal mind starts to gra- try to grab hold of something that's a spiritual thing, you got to tell it to behave. Don't let it keep wandering and creating new worlds and new mindsets and imaginations. You bring those things into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Somebody says it's a spiritual thing. Man. So stop asking Jesus to come down. I mean, if nothing else, don't you want to see your kids get married and stuff? Stop calling them back. Wait till your kids grown at least. Here come the rapture because of you. Come, Lord Jesus. No, not yet. That was a joke, y'all. Man. Y'all say I'm hard, and then I crack a joke, and then y'all want to get all quiet on me. No, that is not a fair. Instead of saying, Jesus, say Holy Spirit. Somebody say Holy Spirit. Oh, mighty God. Somebody say it again. Say Holy Spirit. The Bible didn't say they were all filled with Jesus. Bible says they were all filled with what? And when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to activate the fruit of the Spirit. And this is what I got to leave with you for the unity of the faith. They devote themselves to the teaching. They devoted themselves to fellowship. I know if you're filled with the Spirit because you want to come together. Please, somebody clap, because y'all making me think everybody in here is not filled. When you feel with the Spirit, you look for opportunities to come together. You're not looking at your schedule on ways to avoid it. See, we want to talk about certain things the Holy Spirit release, but we don't want to talk about the truth. One of the proofs, the sure proofs that you've been filled is you want to be with other believers. That's why some of us are so disgruntled. Because I thought we all said we was living for Jesus. How come they don't ever want to come around? Because we're not all living for Jesus. I'm sorry. I got other people in my life other than my church family. Maybe y'all don't have no family, but I do. My whole world is not swallowed up in the church. What kind of language is that? Did that come out of your, the Holy Spirit? No. Because they love to come together with believers. The Bible said they did it every day. It was the byproduct of Holy Spirit indwelling them. Fellowship wasn't something that had to be thought up. It was something that they were led to do. See, and the claps is going away because we keep asking for Jesus. See, Holy Spirit going to make you do something. Jesus, you can say, I'm waiting on him. Don't worry, I prayed. I said, Lord Jesus, please. See, I'm just waiting on Jesus. You say, Holy Spirit, he going to start working on you. <laughs> do I have a witness, somebody? He started checking you on your stuff when you say, Holy Spirit. When you say, Jesus, you know he ain't coming back yet, so you get to go ahead and wild out the way you want to wild out, do the things you want to do, and come and repent the next Sunday. You say, Holy Spirit, you don't get to have your way. That's why we got to be taught the unity of the faith. They fellowship, they share meals. 
for all you, I don't eat everybody's cooking. You just got to be smart. People don't be sanitizing their kitchens. And listen, I went to Jamaica, and it looked like they was cooking some things on a rock. It was some of the best eating I ever had in my life. They set up a kitchen in the middle of nowhere. Let me tell you, they cooked that stuff together full of the spirit, and I'm telling you, the best food you ever eat. And here you are talking about sanitation. Well, you're going to miss your blessing a whole lot down there. Because in the bush, they just hook you up the way they know to hook you up. Thank God for the bush. They fellowship and they ate together. Dr. Patricia is getting ready to head to Africa a week from today. Clap your hands for Dr. Patricia in WLA. And she can correct me if I'm wrong, but they, they get served certain meals in their first mind because we're taught this. is when food is set before you. You know, if you bless the food and you do your best to eat what's set before you. You don't move to offend people because you're so picky and you just, I'm sorry, I can't do other people's cooking and stuff like that. You know, I'm going to ask you the question. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit since you heard about Jesus? Because that was a question, too, because some people that heard about Jesus, but they just hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost. Yet. Oh, it's so quiet in here. Jesus, come, Jesus, come. Oh, yeah. Don't come yet, Jesus. Now, yeah. They shared meals. No one should ever go hungry. I'm trying to encourage y'all to clap louder, you know. No one should be hungry in this ministry or in this community. Not on the Holy Spirit filled person's watch. Some of us don't even eat leftovers. Don't share your food. I'm not yelling with you. I'm encouraging you. They shared. It was a byproduct of having Holy Spirit's presence. Listen, they prayed. It wasn't effort like, oh, I got to go to prayer today. Holy Spirit moves you to where God is. Yeah. Communion with the Father is the new life. So if you struggle to want to spend time with God, come Jesus, come. No, don't come Jesus, Holy Spirit. See, when you commune with him, he start lockjawing you, right? You like to curse. You can't curse no more. You be like, because I will, hallelujah. I've a witness somebody. He will lock your mouth up. I will tell you, tell you some new fruit, cut it up and serve it to you. You know, you can't even talk the same no more. When Holy Spirit get on the inside of you. You can't judge folks no more. You're moved to pray for folks. Do I have a witness, some Holy Spirit-filled people? Oh, don't they do some things that's hard sometimes not to make it personal. They do. But Holy Ghost in you say forgive. Let it go. Move on. Because I don't want to play your stuff on the TV. Yes, sir. I mean, people don't want your stuff on the TV. No, don't play my stuff, Lord. I'll forgive. A deep sense of awe was the result of those ingredients I just talked about. It started with Holy Spirit, and then it manifests in these different ways. Not isolation, because I do better by myself. That's not Holy Spirit. I know you don't like it, but you got to decide, do you love Holy Spirit? You didn't get an option to be an introvert. And I mean, that's where it get hard. It does get a little hard because you got to really want Holy Spirit. Because you think it's about accepting people as they are. No, we all call it to change. 
Holy Spirit didn't come to teach us how to accept each other as we are. We don't need Jesus if we're going to stay the way we are. We came to Jesus so we can be who he called us to be. And I don't want to be mute when he called me to speak. I don't want to be whispering when he gave me the voice of a lion. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Wake up what I don't even know I got on the inside of me. If the only reason why I'm stuck right now is because you're waiting for me to speak to my circumstance, then Holy Spirit, give me the boldness so I can bring that giant down. I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, everything has become new. They were all in miracles. Miracles are things that mankind say cannot be done. Miracle signs and wonders begin to take place because they were devoted to learning the ways of God through the apostles and all the believers they met in one another. So, oh, my God, Jesus. Ooh, they met together in one place and shared everything they had. It's about to get rough. They sold, not bought. Is it on the screen? Where's the scriptures? We don't even have the scriptures this time. Do we have the scriptures so they can read it? Because I want them to, we're going to close out. We land in the plane. We're about to pick up some more passages. They're going to come next week. But is the scripture up? Do we have the scripture up or do I should just read it? It is coming. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to keep looking. Tell tell me when it's there. Because I want us to read this together. Verse number 45. Hold up. Anybody got your Bibles? There it is. Uh, Won't he make a way? Verse 45. Everybody read it with a strong voice. One, two, three. They sold their property and possessions And what? Stop. Hold up. Hold up. That is not the American dream. The American dream is the opposite. You couldn't afford your property, so I took it from you. (laughs) That laugh is deep on the inside of me. And everybody got quiet. When you feel with the spirit, you're not looking for an advantage. You're not trying to find a way to take something from up under somebody else. You want to see them be able to keep what they have. Those with much means is supposed to come with responsibility. You're supposed to be using those means to help others come up. Some of us don't have material wealth, but we have intellectual wealth. And we won't share it. You know how to help somebody go from struggling to having a good credit report and also having some money in the bank. And you watch and say, look at them. They just ain't going to never get their life together. They so dumb and they just make all these bad decisions. And not once has Holy Spirit been able to guide you to to show them how to come higher. It's not even in your mind because it takes your time. Because it's your time. I'm going to go ahead and land the, I'm landing the plane in the scriptures. That's not how God called us to live. That's not the evidence of being filled with the spirit. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes, my God, for the Lord's shepherd, and they shared meals, my God. And they did it, my God, with great joy, my God, in a word I don't even want to read. I give. I give. Bab time. We used to get sanctified dollars before electronic giving came in. Now we send uh, dollars to Cash App. Like I'm a soul into their life. That's not generous. That's convenient to fit your budget. Your financial plans. I don't expect y'all to clap. You got to be filled with the spirit to clap because all I'm doing is reading the word. You want to see us come up? We got to lose that and embrace the kingdom way. For God so loved the world that he what? And what are we doing? Trying to keep. Them's, them is opportunists. 
I give him something else, I'll take it. It's Christmas time. They're giving gifts over here, toys for tots. They're giving gifts over there. I'm going to talk for both of them. Thank, thank you, Jesus. You're so good. No, you're an opportunist. That's not how God's people are called to live. And, and the word of the Lord pierced their hearts. And they said, what should we do? Can the word pierce your heart today? The Bible says they were filled with great joy as they ate meals and had generosity, and all the while, the Bible said they were praising God. And listen, and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. How many know that some of us don't even know what goodwill is with other people? All our experiences with other people got just this negative. Do I have a witness, somebody? Like, I tried to hang out with them, and I, let me tell you, they was turning up their nose. And Anybody ever just... No goodwill and communion with other believers. You know why? Because we keep asking for Jesus instead of welcoming Holy Spirit. You welcome Holy Spirit, he's going to start molding you. He's going to give you peace about what you don't understand so that you can obey God. You don't have to control everything. I had a series of scenarios today, and honestly, they are the inspiration for my message, but I thought I was going to talk about something else. There was one member who wouldn't say that they had a need. They were just going to sit back and not come today because of what they were dealing with and what the, what the scenario was. And I watched because it, you see the communications, and I watched how people just accept the narrative. This is going on, so I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to make it. This happened. I'm sorry. This is our situation. We're not going to be able to do it. And everybody be like, okay. Okay. That's fine. I understand. We'll be praying for you. I'm not just a preacher. Anybody know me, I live it. I find great joy in serving others, leveling and balancing things that are imbalanced. I find great joy when a person is exhausting everything they know how to do. And if this close to their breakthrough, I know that that's the moment when the Lord will usher me to just take that step for them and usher them into that new place. You understand that's the kingdom. You're not looking for reasons and ways to hold what you got. You're looking for opportunities to give because when you're giving to others, you're giving to yourself. And until you understand that, because that's a spiritual thing, you're going to keep hoarding what you have for fear you're going to lose it. On several occasions, to the scent, the Lord will tell me to sow into somebody's life. And before I can finish sowing it, somebody's already sowed it back into mine. I'm going to testify about it because I'm filled. I'm not just a talker, I'm filled. Oh, yes, I am. I'm filled. No one was saying you feel, y'all. I was like, oh, no. It's like, you're supposed to be filled too. I'm filled. One day, it was the morning before church, and the Lord spoke to me. We were getting ready to go to Mississippi. The Lord told me to reach out to Apostle Lindsay and tell him that I'm going to cover him coming to Mississippi with us. So I reached out to him because it's on Sunday. I usually want to give him the order of service and send it to a person. And as um, soon as he started texting me, he said, I want to come with y'all. Now, I hadn't even told him that the Lord told me to sponsor him coming. He opened his mouth and he shared his desire to go. And the Lord had already told me to cover his trip. So I rejoice. I'm, I'm, I'm at the table saying, thank you, Jesus. 
Because ain't nothing better than being in tune with God, y'all. See, it's a whole lot of moments like that we miss. But that's not even the testimony, y'all. That, 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 that's enough. Because I was in tune and, you know, I had the means and I gave it and it was sacrificial. The testimony was when Elder Hayes was sitting right there at that chair. And he rushed me over. I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. I'm like, okay, because sometimes Elder Hayes say, I don't want you to pray for me because I got, you know, things going in my home and things like that. And I'd be prepared to pray for him. But this time he didn't want prayer for nothing like that. He reached into his inside shirt pocket. And he pulled out the amount that I was supposed to sow for Apostle Lindsay's trip. And he put it in my hands the same day. But I'm not done yet. Because that was $200. That was to help cover gas for the trip plus uh, the lodging when you get there. But the men know that I put in the chat, it's going to be 200 to what? 250 so I'm in a conference room preparing to come out to preach. And I get my son knocking on the door. He said, Elder Hayes, I want to talk to you again. I'm saying, okay, so I know he won't pray for something now because he didn't pull me out the conference room. He pulls out $50 and said, the Lord told me to give you this too. See, some of us, we're missing God because he's waiting on our obedience. He's already got the way. He's already chosen how he's going to make sure you're taken care of while you're taking care of somebody that's important to him. But as long as we keep saying, I got to take care of mine, I got to be wise, I got to be smart, I got to look out for my family, God want me to this, that, and other. You'll miss that. He never meant to touch your pocketbook. He wanted to know that you trusted him. You can't fake that, people of God. You either got it or you don't. So I didn't come out of nothing. But what I gained was God's trust. Because he knew that he was more important to me than my money. Because the truth is, it's not my money anyways. Can somebody just begin to worship God over mammon right there? I said, worship the Lord, God over money. Is there anybody that say, God, I put you, I put you over every financial thing, every financial plan. I put you over every dollar, every cent that I have in my account, under my bed, in my safe. Is there anybody that will worship God? Listen, God, if you told me to give what I perceive to be my last, I'll give it to you. Like the woman that was about to feed her and her son, and the prophet came and said, feed me first. And then the moment that she fed the man of God, her Cabinets were so full that she couldn't even hold what God had for her. It's quiet in here. Yeah, I said it's quiet in here. This is the place where the spirit-filled ones understand. You'll get on your feet even if you ain't there yet and say, God, what do you want me to do? Like Peter said, they began to pierce their heart. And they, they came and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? I hear the word and it's touched me in a deep place in my heart. And I may not be there, but here I am and surrender said, what do you want me to do? do? Do you want me to change this way? I'll change it. If you want me to let this go, I'll let it go. I lift up my hands in total surrender. And I say the words that move God and move heaven. God, I trust you. Come on, lift your hands right there. See, you got to have expectations. Some of you won't do it because you don't even know the Lord is ready to meet you too. I trust you. There was an anointing for the miraculous and it's sitting right here in the room right now. We read about it, but God wants us to experience. But you need to be able to say, God, I trust you. I trust you with the money I don't have. I trust you with the bill that needs to be paid. It will not be able to shake my faith. It will not be able to cause me to change my stance. Open up your mouth and bless him out of your spirit. Not out of your mind. I need that thing to hit your belly. The place of breaking. The place of breaking in your heart. The place of breaking in your mind. The place of repentance where you choose another way to look at the same thing. That's not it. 
Some of you are making it about you right now. And you want to think about it. But God don't want you to think about it. He wants you to submit to it right now. What do you want me to do? I want your worship. What do you want me to do? I want your praise. I want you to give me your all right now. You want breakthrough? Then praise me out of the depths of your spirit. Don't give me a performance and don't give me your leftovers. Give me your best and give me your first. Let me know you trust me. Let me know you know I'm Jaira. I will see to it that every need is supplied. See, I shouldn't have to exhort you no more. You should have already hit that well in the midst of the desert. You should have already struck an oasis in the midst of a dry land. Is there anybody that will bless him where you are? He must be God of all if he's going to be God at all. I'm ready for the miraculous to take place in my life. Some of us, we're not big on money. We're big on family. And our deepest cries are for our home. But I dare you to worship God and to bless him because you can trust him with your most important possessions. My children, my husband, my wife. Come on, bless him. This isn't the moment to get quiet. I trust you, God. I trust you hard. I've worked hard. Yes, I have. And I've had to climb out of some very dark and dim places. But I will not allow the progress I've made to cause me to cleave my hand and close it from the bowels of your generosity, from the bowels of your mercy. Miracles. Oh, the woman walked in and heard one word. And the taste of drugs left her system. We're not talking about things you can conjure up and understand with your own mind. We're talking about the things that distinguish between us and God. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody would walk with me right now. It's quiet in here. I wish somebody would walk with me. I don't want spectators. I need some people to plow the heavens right now because I believe that there's some people that's ready to take a step of faith. They are ready to go to another place. They want to live out the fullness of who God called them to be. This is your day. 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 I hear the Lord say, this is your day. This is your day. This is it. The heart's been crying long enough. The heart's been in toil long enough. The Lord said, this is your day. He says, I'm coming to you. Nothing's required of you. He said, I've already got it. I got that heart. I got your heart. I hear you, son. I hear your cry. It's all that I hope for. It's all that I It's your heart. That's the thing that moves me about you. Your heart. Hey, you all step away. Step away. Step away. Apostle, step away. Hey, say to you. Will you believe God today? It's a new day. It's a new day. God says he's bringing rest to your heart. About the spirit realm. There's been a wrestling between the, the logical mind and the spiritual mind. And there's been clamor, like an inner turmoil, a wrestling, a tug of war. But your heart wants God in fullness. And it just so happened that something more than the mind can conjure. 
It awakens when you bow. God says, I brought a bow to your spirit. And I'm making all things new. Just worship me like the first day you felt me. Oh, yes, when the tears fell. To Shamanda de Diosa. Worship me like the first day when you met me. And you found out that I'll pick out a man that others would despise and look over. Prejudge in the whole time. God, I've given you the heart of David. He said, worship me. Because there's a childlike heart on the inside of you. And it was never meant to change. Rest for your soul. That's what the Lord is releasing to you right now. Please don't stop praying. Please don't stop praying. This is his day. It's going to happen regardless, but you can help push it. And you think that God doesn't see. My prayers are not ignorant of the struggle. God says, despite the struggle, I choose you. I choose you. This is what the Lord told me to tell you. You're not hanging it up. You're not, you're not putting your coat away and putting your ministry in the back burner. No, God says, I'm awakening the you on the inside of you. You didn't even know existed. And I'm calling you out, said the Lord. I'm calling you out, said the Lord. I'm calling you out, said the Lord. Oh, you coming out. Because you have my heart, said God. And you love my word. Your discouragement was that others were not getting it. And it broke your spirit. It broke your spirit. And the enemy wanted to use it to destroy you, to snatch you out of your purpose in God. But the Lord told me to tell you not so. I don't know why it's today, but God said today is your day of deliverance. Everything you've been believing for, everything that you've been praying and setting before the Lord, that thing's getting ready to happen. God's getting ready to lift that heaviness off your chest. And he's going to allow you to rest. I hear the Lord say, take my yoke. Take my yoke. It's easy. You don't have anything to prove. You have something to offer. And God says, I'm calling it forth. I'm calling it forth. I've invested something of great treasure, a great value on the inside of you. He says, I'm calling for it. You are not your own. You've been purchased with a price. You've been called to glorify God in your body. He says, I'm going to give you a revelation like I did Paul. Whether in the body or out of the body, he don't even know. The riches of the Spirit. I'm taking you back to the place where you were wild and mesmerized by the riches of the mysteries of the kingdom. He's going to use you. Release it. Release it. Today is a new day. Hear the voice of the Lord. It's a new day. It's not going to be my might. It's not going to be by your own power. It's going to be by God's Spirit. He's breathing on you. He's breathing on you, fresh life. And all you have to do is bless Him. Just bless Him. He'll do the rest. Just tell him, thank you, before it even come to pass. Tell him, thank you. Thank you, God, for not putting me away. Thank you for not giving up and throwing on the towel on me. I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot. I've experienced a lot. And here you are. You're still right there. You're right here with me. 
and I'm going to be right here with you. Blow my mind, Lord. Because sometimes it gets in the way. But blow my mind. I choose the mind of Christ. I choose rest for my soul. I'm going to finish this one. Just spend time with God. There's a part two, but let God do what he's doing right now in and through you. Somebody clap your hands and give God an amazing praise. Come on, glorify him, glorify him. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory, God's people. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. He sent his word and it healed them. It healed them. It healed them. The unity of the faith. That's right. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that's within me, bless his holy name. That's it right there. Oh, yes, it's in us to bless him. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You're welcome in these temples. Have thine own way. Ooh. I feel the Lord in this place. Don't fight God right now. You want him. You pray for this. Release yourself to the Lord. Release yourself to the Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. I want to rest in you. I want to be in awe of you. I want to be in awe of you. I want to be in awe of you. Let the Lord rest on you. Yes. There's a sweet spirit in this place. And I know it's the spirit of the Lord. It's not hard to humble ourselves in the presence of God. We were created to do so. Thank you, Jesus. I belong to you. Somebody worship the Lord, and we're going to get ready to go. I'm 
Come on, pour it out to the Lord. I belong to you. Worship the Lord. You're more real than I wish somebody would get lost. The ground I'm standing on. This is our moment right here, you all. Who knows what miracle's gonna come out of this? Your thoughts define me. yourself to the Lord right now. We're going to leave. We're going to leave. But release yourself to the Lord right now. See, you don't need a man to touch you. The Lord wants to touch you right now. Oh, say Abba.
greater is coming. God says, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. Greater is coming. Don't go in the towel. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. God says, greater is coming in Jesus' name. Just bless him. Bless him in the dry place. Bless him in the desert place. He said, I'll make the desert an oasis. I'll cause rivers to stream out of it to come forth by the dry ground. Hallelujah. Say, Abba. Just lift your hands up to the Lord and begin to bless him. The anointing is coming to your home. Oh, yes, it is. The presence of the Lord is coming right where you are. Just begin to bless him. Just begin to pour your heart out to him. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to call Dr. Patricia up. She's getting ready to go to Africa with a team of anointed vessels. This trip is different in so many ways but sometimes different is good sometimes different is good oh my son I was walking down the stairs the Lord told me to tell you the most miraculous trip you ever had see his strength is perfect in our weakness. Somebody say, yes, Lord. I want you to point your hands to Dr. Patricia. She's not a complainer. But it doesn't mean that there aren't constantly things that try to work against her. When you sit in a holy place with God, Satan wants to bring everything he can to try to dismantle. Yushaba. But I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me to call you. He said, General, stand in your holy place. Stand in your holy place. Stand in your holy place. In your holy place. General! At attention. The nations. I've already placed within you everything that you need. Are the hands stretched out towards her? I want to tell somebody that if you would dare with your heart believe for the woman of God, God's going to allow drops of what he does to her to fall on you. Agree with God right now. Agree with God right now. This mission, these grounds, God said they've already been stirred. The grounds have already been toiled, and they are ready. 
and God says it's good ground. And there are things that the enemy has lined up to try to, to distract. But God says he's given you eagle eyes. You're going to be able to see it from afar. You're going to see it from afar and God's going to cause you to strike it down. I see that thing in the spirit because from a general's position, you function differently. God says, I'm not going to use you in the ways that I've used you in times past. He says, I'm going to use you differently. There's going to be a weight of authority that rests within you. Oh, shut up. God's going to give you, listen, the Lord told me to tell you, and watch, it's going to come forth. He says, there's going to be such a delegated anointing upon you. God says, you're going to speak things that push people into a place quickly. Ministries, you're going to be able to release something from the place of authority that the Lord has called you to walk in. And they're going to grab it quickly. And they're going to move quickly. Everything that you need, God says, is going to be released quickly. You're going to want something to eat, and it's going to come back quickly. You're going to need some more waters for the room, and it's going to come quickly. You're going to have needs for one of the engagements. It's going to come back quickly. God says, everything's going to happen. It's going to happen quickly. It's going to happen quickly. Somebody give God praise right where you are. Hey, General! General! That's the answer right there. I'm calling you into a holy place. place of stature in the spirit where you command from the heavens you don't have to command the heavens to open because you will command from the heavens see demonic entities are being dislodged before you show up God is piercing like the sword did in the word today through every diabolical agenda. Word is quick, powerful, sharpening than any to its sword. It divides. God says, I'm causing you to pierce through the darkness. God says, there's going to be a grace for the miraculous. There is some programming that the Lord told me to tell you, and this is the proof. It hasn't even come together yet. Normally there's a curriculum that's all set and in place and there's been some pauses, some, some unknowns, things haven't been set yet. And God says, because he's already set something there. And when you set foot on the land, everything that he's intended is gonna begin to come together. He said, you are not lacking in preparation. You are ready. Ushamando kusa. Your physical strength. General, stand in your holy place. Your physical man is strengthened now. Kind of that head, it's like everything's been kind of hard, like you're pulling a heavy load. Everywhere you go, you're doing it, but it's not the same. It's been strange. God says that he's making this place uncomfortable because it's not going to work on this plane anymore. He's calling you higher. Oh, yes, you're going to see, you see that thing in the spirit. He said, it, it, it's only like that because that's not your load to carry anymore. It's not because you're being irresponsible. He said, that's not your responsibility anymore. I'm calling you to a higher place, a seat of authority. And I declare in the Holy Ghost that even though people have known you and you have known others, the person that they meet, they will know not of. But they will come to know 
For I'm placing fire in your hands, said the Lord. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance for the ungodly thing. Oh, yes, Lord. Uh -huh. And the wonderful thing about where you're going, the hearts are ready. You see, some places you go, you have to get the hearts ready. The Lord said that he's already ready the hearts. The Lord said that there's going to be deliverance in the heart of leaders because they have been toiling and struggling in areas they haven't talked about. And God's going to give you a burden. And you're going to be able to release a word into their hearts, into their ears. Some in the collective body and some individually. And it's going to break through. That area that has kept them from being able to be the leader they're called to be. And God said, you will speak with authority. You will not sugarcoat. You will not soften. You will say exactly what the Lord says. And you will let God handle the rest of it. Because this is the last days that we're living in. And the things that have tarried and lingered, God says they can no longer linger and they can no longer tarry. They must be exposed. They must be disposed of. They must be released from the lives of God's leaders. And he's anointed you in this strange place you've been in to come higher and execute in a different realm in a different dimension and there will be peace there will be peace and there will be peace said the Lord there will be peace said the Lord in every area you go and even amongst the team all is well somebody clap your hands and give God an amazing prayer. There's some people who have a desire in ministry to go to another place because it's not just, it's not coveting another place. It's something in you that you know God is calling you to. The Lord told me to tell you, make Dr. Patricia in WLA your assignment from the time, from this Sunday to the time they return to lift them up in prayer, to fast and to, to war on their behalf. God says he's going to allow for the gift of God that is upon her life to fall on you. It's going to awaken. See, that's how God works. See, sometimes we want to do it in isolation, but everything that God has ever done concerning his ministry, he's always done it by bestowing from one person to another. You don't get to just get it because you want it. There's an order for how God does things. And I want you to sincerely commit to praying. Because we love Dr. Patricia, we love Bishop Huggins, we love WLA, we love uh, uh, President Nash, we love the entire team. And we want to make sure that they are lifted and undergirded so that as a general, because that's what the Lord spoke to me, my God, and I celebrate it. It's not that she hasn't always been one. Sometimes we just have to be reminded that that's where we function from. And when we get there, we command things. We don't have to ask anymore. Amen. And that's the posture of the heart. Yes, rest in the Lord. Has anybody been blessed on today? Sorry, minister. I got to pray for you real quick. Everybody, just point your hands toward mystery. Father, in the name of Jesus, in obedience to your leading, I lay my hands upon your servant. And I command the sure blessings of God upon his life. I cancel every assignment of the enemy against him. Every lie of the enemy that tried to afflict him. I curse it at the root. In the name of Jesus. Every poison, every toxin, every unclean thing that would try to penetrate his person. I curse it at the root. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, and I declare the promises and the blessings of God upon his life. 
that God, that he'll walk in a place of strength, a place of anointing and stature. I thank you, God, for drying up everything that's tried to attach itself to his body. We repeat, we, we receive the report of the Lord and we reject every lie of the devil over his life. Every diagnosis, that's not what you said. We cancel it right now. And we say, with your stripes, he's healed. He's healed. He's not been a sickly person, and he will not become one. I declare that he'll be whole, spirit, soul, and body. That just like my hand is resting upon his head, that God, your hand will forever rest upon his head. And that he'll know that he's not doing this thing on his own. But the Lord, thy God, is with him wherever he goes spring up a well within his soul Lord God spring up a well Lord God and make him whole I thank you mighty God for the blessings of the Lord are rich and they add no sorrow I speak the sure blessings of the Lord upon his life in Jesus name and all God's people said amen Father, we thank you. Can we stand? Father, we thank you so much for what you've released to us on today. We acknowledge your order. We acknowledge your apostolic ministry. We respect the order that you set in the fivefold. It's for the edifying of the body to we all grow into the full stature of Christ. And we agree with that as a unified body. That's why we also accept miracles, signs and wonders. That's why we accept the presence and the activation of Holy Spirit in our lives to change us and to lift us. That's why we even praise you when we're pierced in our heart of hearts knowing oh God that that's what's going to thrust us to a place of freedom repentance and deliverance God, God I bring down every oppositional spirit every spirit of intimidation I bring it down in Jesus name and I thank you God that there will not be schisms in this body that God we will not be arguing towards one another and against one another but I thank you that God, you are exposing every spirit that won't come in alignment with you so that we can all be who you call for us to be. We thank you, God. I see my satura, my, I see like a cloak over this ministry, a pure cloak, a garment that's literally covering the whole of what you've assigned in this vision. I see purity and holiness. I see it pouring out of the walls into the streets. And I see encounters of individuals coming to know you so that they can live out the life you called them to have and be who they're called to be. Now, Father, as we leave this place, remember your presence. Go before us and even help us to stop asking Jesus <laughs> to come and do things you assigned us to do. Instead, God, may we correct ourselves when we do it, because we're going to have to do that and say, no, God, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hallelujah. You are welcome. You are welcome to have my tongue, my ears, my eyes, my hands, my feet, my heart, my mind. You are welcome to lift me out of the dust and place me where you call for me to be. Now, Father God, as we continue in the unity of the faith, faith and in the bond of peace. God, we ask that you receive all the glory, not just some of it or most of it, but all of the glory out of our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Clap your hands. Listen, consider yourselves dismissed in the presence of the Lord. I want to encourage you as you leave out, we do have communion.